Item number SCP-7370 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures A Foundation Facial Recognition Software has been planted into the broadcasting networks of all major sports leagues. In the event that the software recognizes SCP-7370, the broadcast is to be immediately terminated and all physical attendees of the sporting event amnesticized. A wrestling ring has been installed in Site-19. Once every two weeks, an assigned number of male D-Class personnel with an exact number to be determined on an individual basis by Level 3 researcher Michael Jensen, member of the Department of Sports and Athletics, is to enter the ring wearing professional wrestling attire consistent with styles of popular American, Mexican, or Japanese promotions. When SCP-7370 manifests, the D-Class assigned to this procedure is to attempt to combat SCP-7370. D-Class should preferably have backgrounds in combat sports and display above average athleticism. SCP-7370 has been given a custom wrestling belt with a tracking device inserted into it. See Addendum 7373. In the event that SCP-7370 breaches containment, local mobile task force operatives are to be dispatched to the boat's location and subdue and recontain the entity with a covendral based tranquilizer. Description SCP-7370 appears as a heavily muscled blue human male. It stands at 2.34 meters and weighs 178 kilograms. It sports attire in the styles of professional wrestling and will regularly don purple shuttered glasses and short trunks. Its hair is fixed back in a mullet and it carries a black and blue title belt with the phrase The Champ engraved across its front. SCP-7370 will refer to itself as Mr. Blue. It possesses a highly exaggerated personality similar to those of professional wrestlers in scripted promo short for promotional interview. In professional wrestling, this refers to dialogue used to advance a storyline or feud. Segments It has a strong desire to fight other humanoid males, particularly those regarded as champions in their respective sports and in a setting with a large audience. It will primarily attack title-holding professional wrestlers at televised events. However, it has been known to target members of independent wrestling circuits or other sports leagues when it runs out of targets in the most widely viewed promotions. SCP-7370 possesses the ability to translocate itself across different locations. It primarily uses this ability to manifest in and demanifest from professional wrestling promotions. Whether it possesses an additional anomalous ability that allows it to know where and when an event is taking place, or if it knows where to find its target through other means is unknown. SCP-7370 will assault its victims with heavily exaggerated wrestling maneuvers as well as boxing and street fighting techniques. It will often weaponize inanimate objects from its immediate surroundings. When SCP-7370 has sufficiently incapacitated its victims, it will then use its professed signature move, which it refers to as the Blue Bomb. This technique resembles a set of power bomb. A professional wrestling maneuver wherein an opponent is lifted and slammed down back first as the attacker falls to a seated position. SCP-7370 possesses physical strength and stamina far greater than those of non-anonymous humans, including trained athletes. However, it refrains from mortally wounding its targets by deliberately listening its attacks in time with kayfabe. Term denoting the portrayal of stage or exaggerated events in professional wrestling as real. Tactics common to professional wrestling. When SCP-7370 incapacitates its victims, it will pin them to the ground for three seconds. Immediately afterwards, it will steal whatever object denotes their status as a champion and de-manifest from the scene. Addendum 7371 
SCP-7370 was first observed on November 29, 2010, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Michael Misanin, known by his stage name, The Miz, made his first appearance at a Monday Night Raw promotion since becoming the WWE Champion the previous week. As Ms. Sannon was in the center of the wrestling ring delivering a promo to the crowd, SCP-7370 manifested at the top of the entrance ramp bearing a microphone. The following transcript was recorded. Oh, let me tell you something, Miss. You're not a Champ till you fought the big blue. You've been ducking and running from day one. But now you're gonna get your ass headed to you here in the Lincoln Financial Arena in front of the most electric crowd in Philadelphia. SCP-7370 then proceeded to dance down the entrance ramp to the ring while leading nearby fans and chanting, Clickly clack, here comes Mr. Blue down the track. As Ms. Sen leaned over the rope to communicate with security staff, SCP-7370 proceeded to strike him in the back with a steel folding chair. He entity continued assaulting Ms. Sen before delivering a blue bomb and putting him for three seconds. SCP-7370 then stole the WWE Championship belt and demanifested. Ms. Sen suffered a concussion and two broken ribs but made a full recovery. As the Foundation was unable to anesthetize the crowd in attendance, a cover story was produced that SCP-7370 was a non-anonymous professional wrestler who was released from WWE following the incident. Ms. Allen and all showrunners present were treated with Class A amnestics. Following this incident, the Foundation began installing amnestic payloads into the sprinkler systems of all indoor sports arenas with seeding capacities of 15,000 and over for future use in the event that large crowds therein are exposed to anomalous activity. SCP-7370 appeared at three more WWE events between January 2011 and October 2012, assaulting the promotion's various champions each time. These instances invariably led to the hospitalization of SCP-7370's victims and the mass amnestization of attending audiences. After SCP-7370 stole the WWE Championship, World Heavyweight Championship, Intercontinental Championship, United States Championship, and NXT Championship belts, it began to manifest at alternative wrestling promotions. On July 17th and August 3rd, 2013, SCP-7370 assaulted the reigning Total Non-Stop Action TNA World Champion and All Japan Pro Wrestling AJPW Triple Crown Heavyweight Champion, respectively. Over the next three months, SCP-7370 went on to assault the reigning champions of four separate independent wrestling promotions. As SCP-7370 accumulated more wrestling belts, its behavior began to shift to target other sporting promotions. On February 22, 2014, SCP-7370 manifested in Las Vegas, Nevada at UFC 170. There it assaulted light heavyweight champion Daniel Cumier, who suffered three broken fingers and a broken leg. On March 13, 2014, SCP-7370 manifested in Kiev, Ukraine and assaulted World Boxing Association heavyweight boxing champion Vladimir Klitschko. SCP-7370 manifested at the 2014 Golf Masters Tournament on April 13th. After Bubba Watson completed the final course, SCP-7370 loudly proclaimed to the crowd, Time to send Bubba Grinder his mama! before assaulting Mr. Watson. After delivering a blue bomb to Mr. Watson, SCP-7370 loudly celebrated while waving the master's green jacket over its head, before using the sleeves to tie it around its waist. The entity then promptly demanifested. All participants and audience members present were applied Class A amnestics. Mr. Watson received a concussion and a herniated disc but was able to make a full recovery. The cover story for the incident was that Mr. Watson was struck by a malfunctioning golf cart. Addendum 7372 Containment 
SCP-7370 was first encountered by the Foundation on June 24th, 2014 in Los Angeles, California. MTF Pi-1 city stickers responded to a civilian police report of a large blue man squatting in an abandoned professional wrestling gym. SCP-7370 was found unconscious on a lazy boy recliner inside the gym. It was sedated without incident via several rounds of a covenantal based tranquilizer. Inspection revealed that SCP-7370 had been using the gym as its primary residence. The interior was heavily decorated in myriad professional wrestling paraphernalia, with several cardboard cutouts of Randy Macho Man Savage in the corner of the room, which SCP-7370 had apparently converted into a weightlifting area. All known stone championship belts, trophies, and other paraphernalia were discovered in a single pile in a utility closet, along with numerous other belts and placards, as well as a Little League Baseball trophy and High School Regional Sparing Bee Certificate. SCP-7370 was brought to Site-19 for temporary containment, where it was placed inside of a 3 meter by 3 meter by 3 meter steel containment cell before beginning consciousness. Researchers Jensen and Ryan stood behind the bulletproof glass pane in an observation room. The following transcript was recorded. Date, June 25th, 2014. Location, Site-19. Interviewers, researchers Michael Jensen and John Ryan. Interviewee, SCP-7370. Begin log. Ugh, killer hangover. Where am I? SCP-7370, you are in the custody of the SCP Foundation. We are an institution that seeks to secure, contain, and protect anonymous individuals such as your... Now hold your horses, Buster. I may not know how to count, but I'm pretty sure my name ain't 7370. It's numero uno. SCP-7370, if you would please. Now you, the doctors of destruction, might be big fish in this small, small pond. But if you think you can take that chap in a steel cage match, you've got another thing coming. SCP-7370, you must understand. If you would just... SCP-7370! Stop! Stop that! Security! And log. At this point in the interview, SCP-7370 broke through the panel to the observation room. It proceeded to body slam Researcher Ryan through a wooden table in the center of the room and deliver a blue bomb to Researcher Jensen on top of him. SCP-7370 then ran through Site-19, celebrating before eating the offices of researchers Jensen and Ryan, where it proceeded to steal Jensen's PhD certificate from the University of Texas and Ryan's master's certificate from Connecticut College. SCP-7370 then he manifested from Site-19 before Site Security could tranquilize it. Both researchers suffered concussions and small fractures, but made full recoveries. Addendum 7373, we Date, June 26, 2014. Note, personal log of Level 3 researcher Michael Jensen. 10.30. Okay, that brood is harder to contain than we first thought. Ow! Since the muscle reactions and tranquilizers had little effect, there is a strong likelihood that SCP-7370's ability to demanifest Fest is psionic in nature. We'll have to get a bit more creative with our next attempt. Containment specialist Jonathan Hook was consulted by the SCP-7370 research team. After reviewing past instant logs and all available data on the entity, Hook offered the following analysis. Date, June 27th, 2014. Note, personal log of containment specialist Jonathan Hook. 1420. Hmm, a physical means of containment seems risky. We certainly have the firepower to incapacitate SCP-7370, but no way to permanently shut off its ability to demanifest from any cell we lock it in. I'm going to recommend a more psychological approach. What does this thing really want? 
or available evidence point to some good old fashioned honest competition. So when this thing has every available title, it has nowhere to go but down the totem pole in search of a good fight. Why don't we give it something a bit more exciting? On June 30th, 2014, Specialist Hook put in a request to manufacture a custom professional wrestling championship belt to be held under surveillance by security personnel. The director of Site-19 further approved Hook's request to set up a professional wrestling ring in the center of the Site-19 gymnasium. Hook requested the aid of Eight D-class personnel, whom he described as being highly athletic and having violent personalities. The eight D-class were assigned ring names and outfitted with professional wrestling attire. A collection of folding chairs, tables, and ladders acquired from the site utility closet and other storage facilities were strewn across the gymnasium. The boat was displayed on a podium by the entrance to the room. On July 3rd, 2014, SCP-7370 manifested in Site-19. Specialist Hook greeted the entity with a microphone, standing alongside Researcher Ryan and protected by four security personnel armed with tranquilizers. Researcher Jensen, wearing a striped referee's uniform, was positioned inside the ring. Date, July 3rd, 2014. Location, Site-19. Note. A containment attempt by Specialist Jonathan Hook and researchers Michael Jensen and John Ryan. Begin log. Time, 0945. Finally, the champ is back in. Wherever the hell I am right now. That's a pretty belt you geeks and dreams got. Now, who does Mr. Blue Gala tear apart to get to it? Are those yellow belly doctors of destruction ready for a rematch? If this doesn't work, I swear to God I'm transferring to Site 17. None of this crap happens there. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the main event. Now, this man calls himself the champ, but is he champ enough to take home the gold? Champ enough, champ enough. I'll show you a real champ. Let me at him. Tonight, we got nine competitors raring to go, but at the end of the night, only one can walk out the undisputed champion of the Foundation Wrestling Federation. Hold on, we're fighting that thing. You can't, because no way, man. Huh? What did you say? He called you a bitch. Oh, it's on. And now. Over a period of approximately 43 minutes, SCP-7370 proceeded to physically assault the D-Class personnel, periodically pausing to show both for the empty bleachers along the gymnasium walls. After having delivered a blue bomb to each D-Class individually and beating them to the point of unconsciousness, as well as breaking every folding chair and table displayed in the gymnasium, SCP-7370 laid each D-class in a large pile at the center of the ring and climbed on top of it. Researcher Jensen counted to three and declared SCP-7370 the winner as Researcher Ryan, still standing near the entrance, rang a gong bell. SCP-7370 parading around the ring. Oh yeah! No one's man enough to take down that chap! Now hand her here, nerds! Hope handed the belt to SCP-7370. What a thrilling match, folks! Friendships were made, hearts were broken, and spleens were shattered, and we're just getting started, so tune in next time for the champ's first title defense. Title de- what now? Title defense, you know, when one or more lucky contestants take a shot at the gold. But, I won! Is that it? Oh, come on, you do know what reigning champ means, right? You gotta put some skin in the game, take on some fresh talent, entertain your adoring fans. Special hooks gestures to the empty bleachers. Mr. Blue Game, he saw and he conquered. Now I don't think the ragdolls here are up to snuff, and if that's all you've got, then I think that champ's about to go free willy and jump this small pond. Mike, how many D class personnel are registered at the Foundation? 7,643, give or take. Thank you, Mike. That's right, 7370. You came, saw, and conquered squat. We've got a locker room the size of a Home Depot ready to take you on. 
unless the champ's running scared. But Mr. Blue to you, there will be counting stars the next time you call me that. The champ isn't running nowhere. In fact, you'll have to drag him out in handcuffs before he beats the pop of each and every competitor who wants a piece. And now, after the incident, SCP-7370 ringly entered containment. The director of Site-19 granted the entity's request to bring all of its wrestling paraphernalia and storing accolades from its abode in Los Angeles, California to its containment cell, where they were organized in glass display cases. Beginning July 4th, 2016, Foundation personnel were permitted to feel SCP-7370's belt as a morale booster at Specialist Hulk's request. 